Ongle starting things off over on the T side. G2, they've employed the quad mid setup from the get go. Nothing pacey to open up the pistol. You might hit this point when you don't get contact in top mid. After a while, you're going to start to see them creeping down towards the mid choke point, and then they're going to look to try and take it a little bit later. Wouldn't surprise me if that's the, the end goal on the back of hearing and seeing nothing here. Over in top middle, contact is about to be made over on this B site. Yeah, Nico looking for a quick tap, and he can even smoke it if he gets a warning. Does he want to use it early or save it for later? Will be the latter. As Mongols creep all the way in, they are going very far indeed. The flash will set Nico off. He knows what's to come. They're flanking him as well through the ruins. Nico's boxed in. Can he take anyone with him? No. Bartek jumps around that corner and hits a smooth opener as G2 are left to retake down Banana. Tekka holding the line. His Glock delivers a double. Monacy now moving in, leading the charge. Hooksy right up behind him. Hooksy taps out one. Oh, Monacy adds another. This is a 2v5 that could get out of hand. It's just Monacy left. Oh, and they swing him together. Nice. Annihilation with the close as Blitz draws the attention away from Spawn. Yes, is that ring rust here for G2? These early rounds will answer our questions. Some great movement for Bartak there, but it's Hazteka, I think, a lot of under a lot of pressure, under a lot of criticism. Not, I guess criticism's the wrong word, but with big boots to fill in the departure of Score, who, to, to me, was the best player, if not top two, mm. on the Mongols. I think scrutiny is the word. Scrutiny, like, you know, that's like the right word. We're going to be keeping yes. an eye on him yes. extra so. I mean, because... he, he hasn't proven to be anywhere near as good as Score in the few events yeah. he's played short less experience on these big stages, younger player. But uh, I think we need a lot from him if they were to ever make a run here. They are right now, I haven't looked at the numbers, but I would I would argue probably the most 0-3 team alongside Fluxo. Greyhound slightly dodging that, proving themselves over this very team back at the Asian RMR in Mongolia as well. Uh, Mongols, without a doubt, the most proven Asian team, defeated Rare Atom twice in that tournament in BO1 and BO3. Right now we've got a force up for G2. Nico ready to receive. Oh, come on. Oh, flash in, but it's ugly for Monacy. They spam him, they will go. I think they, they might just go anyway, right? This smoke is on a timer. And Hooksy knows that he's going to wait for these mollies to fade and then get back into the safe embrace of oranges. Tucked in here, flashed by his teammate back in the spawn that offers up another kill to Blitz. And so the Mongols have got the round here. There isn't really a lot that G2 can expect to accomplish in this two on five. The, the phrasing that we use for the Mongols, especially seeing them at Pro League, where we got a lot of maps for them against uh, EU teams, was they play more European-centric. They play pretty solid CS. They don't fall into the traps that Tyloo of old have when we've had the limited Asian representation playing at Tier 1 in Europe. And I, I do enjoy watching them on Inferno because we, we get kind of the epitome of that. There's a lot of you know, groups of you know, wolf packs, balls of death, working banana together, going for nice trades, playing very tight and you know, less kind of crazy individuals. And they're just showing it already. I you know, you, you said something heading into this round. You said that you think Mongols are one of the, you, you, by your guess, one of the more 0 3 pick teams. Yeah, I, mean, I think. Know, maybe I haven't looked at the numbers. I think it's. Uh, His second. I think it's. I, I don't know. In, for my money, I think Mongols are going to win a game here okay. at some point. Yeah, it's going I, to happen. Yeah, I didn't. Um, who, who are your 0 3? I did Fluxo. Okay, there you go. And they got 16 2, so I think I'm doing okay. I didn't pick Greyhound because they have looked improved. Vastly improved in the last three months since Katowice. Almost made it out of groups at Pro League as well. Won domestically. Looked solid at the RMR. Mongols are right behind them. Right now, they're up in the lead though. 2-0. G2 stacking B. Oh, Ooh, pulling util is scary because we know what's around this corner. They're going to boost up. Oh! oh. <laughs> looks down and will find himself a double. Oh, up in the air is JKS. Deletes a man with the Mac 10. Easy close. 
But now they know they got Hooksy. There we go. Oh, 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 six. oh he's, he's just still alive. <laughs> oh, another man. He's still going. I thought he saw blood there. Look at Chad mentality. Look at this. Oh. Yes. <laughs> hey, Sticks to his guns, it. but they run him down. They deal with him. And so the Mongols, they find the pistol. They get the conversions on the back of it. And now we have this first buy round for G2. Yeah, it's all on G2, isn't it? It's all on G2. I want to see a banana take out the gate. You know, G2 fine at playing these car setups and doing reflashes and doing you know, double, triple setups uh, a car that's very common. They're not always taking banana, um, but 3B is an expectation in the first gun round after three rounds in a row at banana for Mongols. So G2 will answer the call. I want to see if Mongols metagame it and go up quick mid. There is a lot of util coming down, but from both sides, Smoke and Molly traded more so for G2 to assure the Mongols are not close. They've not gotten through the util. Mongols expected this, but they didn't jump the gun with an A play. G2 take full reign. Hooksy in the stirrups down by logs. Mongols have apps. We've gone back to AAA. Monacy unknown about on his orb for now. I think it's only a matter of time till they learn about this AWP. Molly over towards short, and Monesty tries to play away from it. Turn from any flashes as well. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Bartak on the receiving end of a Monesty flick. Never a nice feeling. Dead in the boiler, and now they've learned about that AWP. That might decide, you know, where you look to end up. Gonna try and... Have your AWP make contact over towards Banana. Annihilation, mm. cognizant of this boost. Uh -oh. Jump spot in. Oh, a flick oh, of his own. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Two AWP flicks to open this up. Annihilation is one of these AWPers as well who can find impact on the T side. Monacy getting stuck in again over at short. And that's the bomb now spotted. A lot of info on the back of that kill. And with very little time left, that could make all the difference. Rotate oh. starting to come oh, no. through. Has Tekka's blind. I think that's a team flash, but he still holds on. Nine seconds. Down in the pit. JKS could win the what? round, but he lets them in. Can't deny it. Has Tekka no. finds more. And it's Mongols with one hell of a round, playing it to the final few seconds. Down to the buzzer. And they steal it away from G2. Score who? Dude, Hasteka is the real deal. That's unbelievable. He gets four blinded on the kill. Knife pull, thinks he's got it. Goes over the top, finishes the job, covers the plant. Also, that was a beautiful round for the Mongols. They should never win that. And JKF S whiffs the spray that wins the round. Oh, yeah. JKF up, man, down oh, in the pit. Yeah. Like that, that one's gonna hurt. Respect. You know, that was the round right there. Oh my goodness. That, that was sickening from the Mongols. That's not even, yeah, sure. G2 could have won that round. They right. had ample opportunity. They had a couple of fights. They should have won, but Mongols capitalized on every miss. You picked Mongols 03, you asked for this. In the wise words of Alistair, F your pickums. I don't think that's the quote. Right. Here we go, out through the apartments into the JKS 5-7, but it's only good for one. Monacy in the sight with the Deagle, one to the dome. He's so low on health, but he still gets out with a kill. Not for long, as the nades will find him. That's giving you a route into the A play now. Bomb can look to get planted here. Oh, the flank. They might, they might catch this timing on Blitz, and Hooks he has. Oh, what was let he? him turn. What did he want? But he does deal with him. Gun now retrieved, Hooksy is armed and dangerous over on shore, and one man's crept all the way up to the hay bales. The Mongols have no idea that he's here. Annihilation runs the risk of just getting backstabbed as he tries to play out on shore, no. doesn't check the close angle, and so that's a freebie from Hunter's CZ. Now it's just Hasteka, and he's run out. They, they double peek him from the short side. Oh, it looked like... So G2. Yeah. Finally break in with the force. Looked like they were going to clear Hunt. Insane to hear how the Mongols have been playing Prack for the Major on 100 ping against EU teams from home. And I say 100, it's closer to 150. Yeah, we've, we've, we've played against yeah, these guys. Yeah, we've played with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boost up. 
Lovely way to get Monacy Zorp involved in Aid's oh. bully and whittle down this double peak at top banana. Nico is stuck fighting, but Monacy every step of the way is offering up resistance. Has he got any more? They're trying to bait him out with the AWP, giving him a jiggle, giving him a wiggle. And now oh, the no. flash wrecks him through the molly. He's going to burn to death. That won't entice them through. That won't bring them into the action just yet. Hooksy is the only line of defense here, but he's got teammates moving around. Gonna re-smoke, replenish that top banana util, and that keeps the Mongols out for now. Jiggling from the coffins. They just walk right on through, and Hooksy, Sick. that's exactly what he wanted. He takes charge, even retrieves that AWP, and he's now posted with his teammate in the spawn with Hunter there. There shouldn't be a way back in for Annihilation. Hooksy wants to go for it all, fires off very preemptively, we'll say. But that doesn't really give Annihilation an edge here. He's going to get double swung from spawn. Then Hooksy can look to get involved. There's no way to win this 1v3, and he knows it. Good save. I'm surprised he's as committed as he, as he was there in that 1v3, but really wanted to you know, see, what, see what was on the table, see what was on offer. And we've already seen some very crisp shots for the Mongols, so individually coming in hot, and you'd need to. But Matt Hooksy's 1G2 both their rounds right now, uh, individually. It's a good sign. And, you know, we kind of had that in that phase game a moment ago where it was just rain. You know, on paper, the fourth best player on the team, right? Although not always in practice. And, of course, on a superstar team, you can really rely on anyone. But there's still time for Nico to get on the board and Hunter to rise up above the rest. These are the players you would expect on a map like this. Especially with the positions. Nico starts A. Hooksy and Monacy taking a bit of space towards B. Monacy orbs the angle and G2 put pressure on alt mid as well. They can insta flank. Hunter's going for it. Now Monacy backs up. They know a B play is inevitable. And even if these B players fall, there will be fast flanks. Out they come. Lovely shot from Monacy. He's showing up in oh. great form. Nico finds one blind. And they're closing the gap on Monacy, but Hooksy's got his back. As they try to scale up and over on the oranges, it's certain death that awaits them inside of this B site. Hooksy and Monacy just playing back to back with one another. Ooh. Annihilation, beautiful shot to deal with Hooksy. But similar to last round, locked in a 1v3 that's just too far past the post. And there's no going back to save this time. The flank is in. Nice. Hunter's got the better of him. And so G2 is starting to close this gap. Solid round, decisive for G2, playing as they should as the favorite, confident push immediately into- Just the hero AK, they've put everything on the line here. Mm. Could have elected to just play the eco out, right? And then they would have had kind of everything they need in the next round. Well, they've got an idea, definitely. We see a couple of, oh my God, Monacy's going for wall bangs. You don't see every day. How nice. Like, uh, How nice is that AWP as well? Monacy's AWP. Which one is it? Dragon Law with the I by power stickers. Oh, okay. Damn. I, I think uh, Annihilation had a Desert Hydra, I want to say. Pretty tasty. Hashtag is at 150 ADR coming into round eight. Had some very impactful rounds. So, funnily enough, not the guy I would have said coming into this game I want on the AK, but right now, with what he's given us. Go on, lad, show it. Oh, okay. Oh, way to begin. Hooks, he's blind. He's boxed in. And they will overwhelm him. Suddenly, a route to the B play is open. They're desperately scrambling bodies around. Monacy going to be the only line of defense. He's trying to get in position with the orb, but the smoke's are already in. Oh, he's just oh, praying oh. that something connects through what? this smoke, and it will for Hunter. They lose Monacy in the meantime. He's spammed out over at Coffin. G2 is suddenly in with a chance on this retake. The four spy for the Mongols sees them put in a 2v2 post plant. Both players back at the site. And so the timing on these peaks has got to be perfect for G2. If they get separated in these fights, if they give over two 1v2 attempts, Mongols are going to love that. 
ready to swing. So out they come from the spawn side. Blitz is fed to them, but back at the site is Bartak, and he's going to hold on. Nice. They're running at him, wow. and even though they get the kill, there's no time, surely. It's going to be close. No. Oh. And it dawns on Hunter now, but too little, too late. He's dead to the bomb, and the Mongols do it with a force buy. That's sick. Bartak buys just enough time, positions very well behind the new boxes, covers for just another second, and even though Hunter hits that running shot, these opening pistol kills were everything. We know what two entry kills can do on a map like Inferno. An unbelievable one deep for Annihilation on that boost. And man, for Nico right now, I, I feel him. It, it's been it's been hard. He's been getting cleared up at sandbags. He's been getting nade stacked. Then he hit, gets hit by that one D on a jump, just trying to set Hooksy up. He's getting robbed right now of, of these rounds. Mongols very competitive out of the gate. 5-3. Back to Banana. But, you know, that was already a four spy, and they lose all players. So four Galils. Not a pretty picture for the Mongols. Or is G2 far more well endowed in this round? Wanna see up in apartments. This guy starts where he wants and stays mobile. Banana control allowed by G2. Oof. The nade timing is fantastic as they set up a boost. Honestly, just had to eat it. And G2 starting to make a mid-round move back into Banana, retaking it as this mid-play comes through. Oh, they move out, but into this boost up on top of short. JKS and Hunter make quick work of it. Trying to get out down into the pit is Bartak, but in doing so, he's left in the prying eyes of Monacy. And going back up, Banana, not the safety net you'd hope for, as there's two players still sat here for G2. Looking like a pretty convincing return to form from the G2 squad. They're even pushing down Banana, so Annihilation was on one hell of a timing there. G2, a clean way to find their fourth. Five alive at the end of it. That's a nice way to build back in, right? We remember the Mongols coming into that round. We're already kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of what they could bring out. Came into it with four Galils, for crying out loud. And uh, G2, a five alive round, just puts, uh, you know, one round of difference between them and getting E-Code, so. Yeah. And Still now a chance to build up even more money, right? As the Mongols only have a Deagle that they're going to have to juggle around. Yeah, still for a, for a you know, team that's shown good utility usage. Okay. What? You got three. They just all lined up what? for him. <laughs> okay, well, it's a clean sweep here for G2. Finish him, Hunter. Through the smoke, why not? But for a team that has shown good utility usage, I mean, that was a uh, mid take in the previous round was pretty lackluster. Did not flash JKS off, did not you know, push anyone out of position. So, gonna need to see better XX for the Mongols. The third play was in the pit, right? Yeah. <laughs> you take that. And here we go, 5-5. Five, five. A good beginning from the Mongols, but will G2 start to steamroll out of control now? Well, it's two flawless rounds in a row for G2. And now they're going to start taking some liberties here, right? This is the freedom that comes oh, with what they banked yeah. up. They flash Hunter into the bottom <laughs> mid-fight. And he gets out with so much. Softens up Annihilation for Nico's nade. He will fall at the hands of Azteca, but JKS was teed up to get that trade. There's a nice route crap. to the B play open. Azteca's low on health. As he moves in to attempt the 1v2, deep spawn smoke, but they could look to come through that. They arrive a little late after the bomb's planted, so now you might just have to wait out this smoke. Full belt of util on both players, so they really get to nullify a lot of these angles here as they move in for the retake. Azteca right. goes swinging, and he might be low on health. But he brought us down at the 1v1. Monacy out of the picture now. JKS has got to do it. 
has got to be that man. He knows where Azteca is. The flashes keep him off that bomb. This is masterfully done right now. He's called the bluff. He peeks out on the tap. He's got and it. JKS will secure that round. Battered and bruised RG2 as the 1v1 goes their way. That hurts for Hasteka, man, but he did all he could, right? Two flashes, doesn't swing off of it. And then the final tap, you've got to check it eventually. And JKS goes just wide enough that he can catch him on that lip. That corner is wood back at Ruin, so it's perfect. You can spam him through. Hasteka, what a sick round, though. Again, pulls up with an AK and puts bodies in bags. He's definitely looking like a, you know, the, the missing piece for the... How do they make that work, T-Side Inferno? Oh, there's a triple B lean for G2 out of the gate in this round. Monacy's there supporting with the AWP. And the they're starting to take. What? Yeah, yeah I, I was wondering. I'm Chill. like, where? It's A. They know it's A. hooksy has got four banana. The issue is the flash is in apartments, so it's going to be a chimney flash if they throw it. That probably won't do too much. JKS doesn't have a gun. I think that's what they were looking for. He only has a USP oh, here. No. Oh, this is weird now. A lot weirder than it needed to be. His teammate is nearly dead, but you also don't want to get caught blowing oh, the gun across. JKS matter. and Hunter are both spammed out. And this gets real awkward now. This is a couple of unforced errors in this round that have come back to really hurt G2. And now you're in a position where you have to save. You know, you might be here, like right on the edge of being able to retake, but if nothing's offered to you, you're just saving. And so that one's gonna hurt. Go check spawn, Hugo. There is no there a gun? Spawn, so he just forgot to buy, fully just forgot. But then why, he did. why was Hunter running? Did he drop his weapon? I missed that completely. Like, that just doesn't happen at this level. No weapon? I mean, he got spammed out ultimately, so not the end of the world. Yeah, but, but you know, it affects everything. It affects, yeah. like, the angles he's trying to play. I, I doubt JKS would have ended up on top of the cold box if he, if he didn't realize midway through the round, like, wait, I don't have a primary. Yeah, if there was a gun, J-Raz would have found it. So there, there almost certainly wasn't in the round. That is super awkward for G2. And hey, the Mongols go it's, for an apps pop. This one looks as that is, that is one you just have to brush off quickly and, and go next because that is a huge mistake. 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, you know, I think it'll, it'll be one of these things where you can laugh it off if you go on to find success now. But if this becomes like how you let the Mongols back in, I think that's where it starts to, to weigh on you a little bit more, right? Uh, if you immediately find success here, suddenly you're laughing and you're going, oh, well, you know, when I actually buy a gun, the game's a lot easier. Ha ha ha. And everyone's having a good time. Util has been incredible in this T side. We've seen some really big nades for the Mongols. Gets dunked up top mid for G2, Nico, or top B rather, Nico again, limited by utility. It's going to be fast up long, nothing to do. You can't stop this. Hunter's being wrapped. He has to turn. Last second he does, but the flash is good. Only allows for one and done. JKS needs this multi now. He's the last line of defense and Hasteka cuts out rotations. JKS cannot convert, and that is the site. Do you risk it all on a two on three? Many teams would say no. And G2 are many teams. Sadly, the right call, they've not got the money. You'd think they'd have more money, right? They saved all that money by not buying an M4? Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, dude, no, that, that, this is, you know, this is kind of teetering on the edge of worst case scenario because yes. that previous round happens with like the weird buy situation. You come into this one and you're like, don't worry, it's all good. Like, you know, we'll bounce back. And now you've lost this round. Your money is right on the edge. The Mongols are starting to run away with the T side. Suddenly, you know, them winning out the half is more than realistic. If they if they win this next rifle round, the Mongols are looking down at a 9-6 scoreline mm. fairly comfortably. So, you know, this... That, that one weird round has kind of spiraled now, and, it, and it's become a far bigger problem, a far greater problem for G2. They, they can still come together. They can still get ahead of it and beat this problem. But if the Mongols go on to win out the half, you know, I think that's where your, your mental hurts a lot more, right? Knowing yeah, how good. different it could have yeah. been. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, this is a scary BO1 right now. I think Inferno was already scary because while G2 should beat 
you know, this team on Inferno without a doubt. It's, you know, you're still willingly playing into your opponent's favorite map, even if it's not necessarily the best map. But it's the most tested map against EU teams. Oh, look at this play. Nico not ready. Not for a moment. Hasteka goes right through that smoke. There is a kill to keep things in a four on four. That bomb needs to be retrieved. Mongols can't commit just yet. If they do, they'll be lacking the package. But they put on so much pressure on this B site. And Hasteka's going to keep going. Hootsie through the smoke. Tries to be the hero, but it's only one and done. Techno flashing his way through. Dodges the spam. And Mongols own B for now. Yeah, and arrests here on the other side of the smoke, and as it fades, oh, he can stop this yeah. bomb plant. No. But he spams low, and the plant's up on the ledge, so they get out with their lives intact in the three-on-three. Three. This is the kill. Next kill decides a lot, and it's Techno to win it out. JKS now dead. The man advantage lies with the Mongols. They spot the orb back in spawn, and Monacy's picked up. Hunters now know it about him, whittled down by Techno up on top of the boxes. That's a defensive smoke. That's the smoke of a man that's trying to save and Blitz will not let off the pressure. The Mongols, they've won out the half at bare minimum and they've broken G2's money heading into round 15. They're looking for four in a row to close this out 9-6. It's just unbelievable. Sure, there was a, a FAMAS and Nico, he's had a horrendous start to this game. Somewhat of it. At times, not even mistakes being made, right? Like just getting nade stacked again. He's 50 health. He started every round 50 health or getting, you know, caught on jumping one digs. But yeah, that last round again, the walk through the smoke has taken us making plays, man. He's making me a fan. And Mongols have the pace in this T side. They are running amok. Hunter's flashed in for a long fight. Clean with oh, the CZ. Oh, That's yeah. nearly a triple. Azteca was tagged right in the back line, bored down low, and now could get finished off by Nico. Yeah. Nico's going to respect this smoke. That's given Azteca a little more room to move in. Keep the pressure on from long in the sight. JKS falls uh. first, and there's the backstab. Nico arriving just a couple of seconds too late here, and a 2v3 for G2. Wounded on Nico, tagged up by the nades earlier on. And he's had a very, very rough game here. Is he in the mindset to turn around like this back in G2's favor? Maybe. He opens up with one. Hooksy's creeping up short and Nico sets him up with a flash, but one hell of a turn from Annihilation. Nico's got to do it alone. They're both in the sight oh. and he can't find them. The Mongols close it out at 9-6 in this first half. They go into the second, sporting a three round lead. Run that track, baby. He is really putting on a show right now at 130, or sorry, 120 ADR after the first half. Nico silent. G2 with a required pistol round ahead of us. Yeah, G2 are going to need Nico to come alive here, right? That would make everything so much easier for this G2 squad. You know, he's still been involved in other ways. Nico's good at that, like finding ways to still have impact. He's got the most flashes on his team, the highest UD. So uh, he's still been carrying a bit of impact here. But you want frags out of Nico. That's why he's in the squad. He's not a support man. He's not setting you up. He's meant to be the one going for the glory. And so expect to see something from him over towards Banana. I know he didn't fare well here in the first half, but this is usually where he looks to do his best work. Yeah. If he gets his kill, he'll draw his team back. They can go for a B hit, but he's been smoked out. Oh my God, Blitz, does he think this is B? He's on a big flank right now. Hunter's holding on. Blitz forces oh, that this kill. Is weird They're now. still ahead of it, but Bartek's got the spot and there's a man in the sight. Yeah, you know you've kind of forced them for the A play when they come out the apartments like that. Oh, oh. mopped up Annihilation is clean with the USP. And so now it is just Nico in the clutch. 1v3, all eyes on him. And the Mongols peeking from the graveyard, giving him a chance at this fight. Nico might be a little lost in the source here. Doesn't know the whereabouts of this three-man stack. Ooh. He's got the info oh. now. Nico oh, oh. the ball and is run down by Techno's Doolies. If he had so his gun out. So close to the 1v3. That was his. But just stolen away. And the Mongols now with a pistol under their belts, moving into double digits. I thought for a moment that yeah. Nico was back. Yeah. 
limited by what's in his hands, literally. Could have landed it, should have landed it, crosshair in the right place, but bomb in his fingers. And Mongols will steal that pistol round away, stopping the clutch. Something to be said for that right now. Everything is coming up, Mongols. Despite G2's best efforts. Got a couple of rifles here, but G2 are limited. Tech 9s are plenty up middle. Nico's Deeg may be the world's best. And he might get a fight in mid. That smoke comes down, but they want to fight it. Flash is a problem, though. Bartak spraying through the smoke gets one. Annihilation on the long side is gifted an M4 over. And G2 trying to make the most of this chance. Hell yeah, take the gun out. And look to play it as a two on three. Just fully reset the round. I like this. I wonder if that reload is going to send them back to B. Yeah, it should. They hear it in middle, but they know he took it long. So that's big info for the Mongols. And they're they're gonna get quick to reclaim yeah. this as well, actually. I do really, you know, they, it's so early. they've been very heads up, though, in how they played this CT side, right? Like, the moment there's quiet anywhere, they've been keen to re-aggress and try to go searching for the info. It's super proactive, and it's given them a real edge here in the 3v2. Sick round. This backstab is going to be immediate. It might arrive before the site hit even takes place, with G2 yeah. really squeaking this one for time. Oh, Techno fires off just a second too soon. Lance trying to come in. Oh, oh no, it's ugly. Him. It's ugly. Kill They're him. trying to regain control. And they stumble back to their feet. Nico at okay. one HP is finished off through the smoke. And so the Mongols will get a leash back on G2 when all is said and done. Yeah, I think that reload is the killing blow for G2 because Hunter, he had no ammo so, uh, on the M4 and he picked it up. So he tries to get as far away as he can, but he's still within earshot of Bartak on short. Or yeah, I think it was Bartak or four Mongols, which gives them a quick flank, which wins them the round. So that's a, a curious mistake for G2. We've had a couple of them in this game, 11-6. And a buy-in for G2, despite losing their previous force. They made it close. They get a plant. It's not awful. But these are the kind of buys that you roll your eyes at if you lose the game. It will catch Mongols off guard, no doubt about it. But Util thrown up top B. Mongols know there's something in the tank. And Monacy is up ahead of every expectation. Big opening kill, but he can't convert more. Still, that's an invitation enough if you're G2, right? That one kill in towards the B site does get them interested and they want a full send here with a coffin smoke down oh. and CT locked out. It was meant to be free passage, but Annihilation finds a way to return the advantage to the Mongols. More spam, but it's returned from the players at Banana. Backstab coming in from the Mongols in the meantime and the Utils coming through to deny a bomb plant for now. That gives that much more timing to this flank that's coming through silently very late in the round here. And you can see Hunter he needs him. trying to keep his wits about him, but doesn't want to just dedicate towards this flank angle yet. Goes back in, doesn't know about the second player. And so we're right back on 2v2, smoking at the coffins, going to try and lock Nico out of the round. He's now got to wait behind that, tries to play through it, tries to play ahead of it. He will cut down Bartak, saves JKS's life, who goes on to get that final kill. And G2 on their force by break back in with their first T-side round. Yeah, finally a round. It feels like Nico can say, I did something, you know, I had impact. I've, I've won something for my team. He gets the plant in, gets two kills in the post, makes a, a very risky play through a smoke to give JKS room. And now G2 trying to hype themselves back up and get into this map. Because this has been a very quiet beginning for arguably the world's best. That rust. And I mean, that was interesting to even hear Hooksy. Well, we'll hold this off. We'll hold this off because G2 are B very quickly. There's not a lot to play with for the Mongols, right? The back to back force buys came at a cost. And G2 got exactly what they wanted for, uh, from it. Four Mongols were able to build up a buffer. Now they're stuck on two M4s and three pistols. Double app set up as well, just playing back to back. Now, this is going to work beautifully if they win the fight onto JKS. That's where this really gets profitable. But it's a big if, and it doesn't look good out of the gate. 
Second man is now meant to be here to win this, and he will. Blitz's Deagle rings out. Oh, they're already down long, and that comes as a surprise to Annihilation, who's caught on a bit of an island there. They're ready for the Apsar swing. And so Blitz only gets one and done in the apartments. That's the save secured now for the Mongols, and G2 starting to pick up a bit of steam. What I was going to say is interesting you're hearing Hooksy seemingly talk down on the idea that G2 had to, to skip uh, Rio, which f from my perspective, I think from many others, looked like a good idea for G2 to, you know, go back. Everyone's talking about the schedule, about being over overworked and playing all these events and a lot of travel as well. You know, some teams flew to Rio and exited within 24 hours uh, and FaZe got grouped as well. It seemed like a good idea, but obviously as someone self-proclaimed, a grinder who has you know, been in ex Copenhagen Flames and played all these, you know, intense schedules, especially online, uh, it seemed like he wasn't for the idea. But yeah, the question of rust was presented by Banks and there's definitely been some in this map. There's no doubt about it. But G2 looking to shake it off, scrape it off and try and pull a late game comeback on the T side. And this has been something that has been more of an issue for Asian teams in the past when they come to Europe is, you know, even despite a good start, maintaining it on the CT side up against some of the world's best teams who get to dictate the flow. That has been where teams like Tyloo have struggled and the Mongols in more recent times. I mean, even if you look at the numbers on Inferno, their, their T to CT is 57% T on this map. And sure, it is a map that's definitely got more T-sided, but it doesn't scream faith. What it does scream is the potential for G2 to come back into this game. Oh, they hold the shot on the boost, but as they reassemble it, it's into Nico's crosshair. Now, he isn't able to find the man under the boost, and he's still walking into like a layered setup here. That is a USP doming Nico. They barrel through the smoke, and now they get the info that B's clear. The footsteps heard by Azteca over in top mid. If he could have knocked one player out of the round before falling, I think you would have seen the Mongols try to give this round a go. The fact that he dies immediately might make them just taper off. Look to save these guns that they've worked for. That nade damage really makes it so, right? Like, any any idea that they were going to try and contest this round is out the window when Blitz gets bought down a 30. And so G2 now two rounds away from tying this game up. They've kind of gone through the, the easier couple of rounds here. The real challenge is coming up next. Two more beats, two more beats. Yeah, no, hey, fair that's play. That's how you we should do it. Get your info out and then mold. That's how you should we, do it. Up. We saw the fight from uh, yeah, Vartax and POV. It was kind of wild. So, yeah, fair play that that one gets under your skin a bit. Nico still with his head strapped on, though. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, that's unlucky. We'll call it. Big kill for Hooksy on the exit. Gets rid of one of the two saved guns. It's still a buy for the Mongols, though. And Annihilation can... Yeah, he can the get the orb, but it would have been nicer, you know, if he if he survives at the end, he drops a gun over someone else, then it's like a real full belt of util with the kit and everything, and like him being on the orb with only a smoke isn't as big of a deal. Now, like, you are a lot more restricted here, right? You've only got, uh, what, two, three players with full util? I know that's still a good bit, but like, this is such a util-dominated map, right? So, yeah. yeah, it hurts a little more, and I think notably... You're going to be weighing up like Util versus Kit on some of these guys as well. So it looks like Blitz is going to be the only player with a Diffuse Kit here for the Mongols. Just ends up being that tiny bit more expensive right at the end. Monacy's also donning his AWP on the other side. You know, the one reassurance I think for this game has been similar to kind of like Rain in that phase map. Hunter's been solid the whole way through. He's been the rock for G2 across both halves. It's 5-0 in opening duels. Yeah, Blitz wants to fight here. Ooh. He's taking a peek down through middle. Aware. At the same time that Annihilation was throwing up on that boost, but ends up on the receiving end of the Monacy Orp. Blitz very clearly wants to be active and fighting in this round. He didn't actually purchase up uh, extra util, so kind of an oddity considering it was a pretty like cash-strapped round for the Mongols anyway, and he's the one guy with extra cash. Didn't get a kit either. So all this stuff is, you know, could very easily come back to hurt the Mongols, especially considering they've started a man down now. 
Lacking the util to take the momentum out of a site play. And then if you end up in the retake, well, not only are you a man down, but you're working with the 10-second defuse. So G2, this is like a perfect chance for them to really get back into this game. Smoke to give them room to move between. But that molly still spreads a little bit. He's got to play in the open. Has Tekka on the pillar right now. And his teammate at the back of the bomb site. This is so uncomfortable. Nico with a clear. It's not perfect. Has Tekka swings with a flash, but he can't finish the job. Last bullet onto Hooksy. That bomb is very deep. G2 must go searching. They must go hunting. And Monacy snipes him down from afar. He gets legged. This is uncomfortable right now with no smokes down. JKS is so far away. 20 seconds waiting for this flank. And even when they get it, it might not be enough. Bartak is still a problem piece. Up with the AWP. 13 seconds. He knows where that bomb is. They're coming his way. And Monacy hits the one dig. And that's broken the money. Broken the momentum that the Mongols once had with six rounds in a row. Two. Oh, that rifle full blind. No way. They get two kills up top B. Monacy, of course, keeps things interesting. And that molly will put Hasteker in problem. And he does it instead. And so Mongols, well, they wanted the guns. They tried to retrieve them. They get punished. Can't sit pretty for long. Well, Techno, a P250 and a dream in the 1v3 site hold. His teammates very, very far away. And so you're kind of hoping that Techno can do the impossible here to even cook up a scenario where you look interested in this round. One kill would be enough to do that for the Mongols. Oh, but he's getting pressured. He's boxed in and they will run him down. Even though the Mongols are all here, the AK grab is nice for Bartak. Surely oh, not. Won't fire off the flash. We still don't know he's deep up through Banana. But their position to deal with exactly this. Dark player going to go swinging. And there's Hunter with the close. Five in a row. For Obviously, a, a strong playoff run from the top five. And we want teams like G2 and FaZe there. And I think we're almost getting the best of both worlds in these opening two games where the underdogs prove that they can tangle with the beast and they can put up a really strong map. But if the favorites still win, we kind of get the road to the, to the you know, tournament we want while still having good signs from Mongols from Monty. Let's see if they can put a foot in the door right now. Jumping out of apartments, some crucial trades from G2 needed here. JKS will provide. It's all up to Blitz. I can't believe he's gotten so deep back within the site, but just falling shy of that kill. And the outcome of the round's been decided. Mongols are already left to save. This one only lasts a few seconds. It feels like a very, very fast round from G2, a real change of pace on the immediate apps pop. And the Mongols were not ready for it. A little awkward there. You know, I think Blitz was, was left with so much responsibility after Hazteke and Bartak both, uh, you know, kind of fumble their, uh, their, their attempts of containing that push through the apartments. Saw some similar rounds in the T side for Mongols, right? Are, are off the back of winning a slow B round. They just go for a quick apps pop and G2 were often caught off guard and out of position. We saw a couple of missed rounds with JKS. Same thing happens for Mongols. They are you know, moving between positions when G2 jump out of apps. And so there was just no way they were going to be able to either get a multi-kill or buy enough time in their positions. Nice call from Hooksy. G2, what a streak on this T side after a, an ugly game. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, it, it's even like the, the kind of staying power that they have in this series is what's scary here, right? They, they, had, they had three players at nearly 16K coming into this round, you know? Like, that's, that's terrifying. That's not the G2 you want to be up against. It means that for Mongols, this is going to be a real grind of a game if they wanted to try and, you know, find a way back into it. You're not going to get those freebie rounds. Every round, you're going to be up against this Monacy Orb. You're going to be up against the full util harassing you at Banana. They're going to have rifles out. Only one at B as well, and doesn't fill you with hope. It's an Orb that will be inevitably smoked off. A big gap there for Nico to look at. 
lots of options here for G2 with full banana. Hunter lurking in alt mid, making noise, keeping Mongols strong. That's exactly what G2 wants. Annihilation. He can play ahead of the smoke. He can get a one kill and get out, but how much more? At least his team have left him Utah. It's a second smoke throw, and he's got a Molotov now. But this execute will decide it. Yeah, he kind of needs to play ahead of this smoke. I don't think he can. It's a perfect smoke. He, he can go over the top, but he'll die. So he has to just let them in, hope that the smoke spam finds something which it won't for the Mongols. G2 with a plant in the 5v5. Don't want to save here, but it's unfortunately the best option. Oh, Ooh, that's what you need. Suddenly, yeah. suddenly they've been given a, a reason to give this round a go. Three players on the backstab. Boost up over in spawn. Hunter goes looking for this kill and he nearly finds them both. Monacy's looking down Banana. The flash gets him off the angle. Right here are the Mongols, but Monacy repels the first man in. More where that came from. Hunter holds it down from the pool. Oh, and then oh. JKS goes on to close. G2 will not let them in. I felt like they weren't even positioned for that, right? Like, sure, they have this double hold on Banana, but there are three players, and player after player is not expecting more. Modesty didn't look straight rounds for G2 on this T-half ever since they had their first rifle. They have not dropped the ball once. A little more active over towards Banana this time, right? Lobbing in that deeper util, but they don't hang around to fight for it. They don't hang around to contain this. And I think, you know, this has been a bit of a problem for the Mongols, right? G2 have often had a, a serious foothold at top Banana almost for free. And if you're going to give a team like G2 this much room to kind of make their plays, to stake their claim over on this side of the map, they'll take it. You know, time and time again, they'll take this space. Feels like a gift to be getting it for so little util, so little, you know, damage even exchanged on the early nades. The Mongols are having to play very reactive Counter-Strike, right? They don't know what's happening till the exec is coming their way. And and that's a scary way to play the game, especially when they're, when they're not really employing these gambles a hell of a lot, right? It's pretty standard 3-2 split. So now they learn it's the B play. So much is weighted on these first few fights. And at least Azteca is going to start it off nicely for the Mongols up on this boost. Tries Ooh. to take it one step further. Nico moves in and will get taken out. JKS and Hunter trade it back into the three on three. Oh, and they look yeah. to punish this AWP on the swing. Hunter is channeled in right now, laser focused on completing this comeback, on turning the game around. And they now stand about to find 14, breaking the Mongols' money as we get into the final few rounds of this game, unless this retake can come through. Missed Molly as well. It's perfect, but it's not on JKS, who could have been burnt out. 20 health, and the flank is coming through for Modesty. Lines that shot up, sets JKS up for one more, and he's buying just enough time to win this round for G2. 14 now, and it is in the palm of their hand. They just have to close their clasp. G2 with a phenomenal T half. Hasteka, what a cheeky boy. He gets a kill off the boost. He pulls back so that G2 won't see him. They expect him to drop off. He somehow gets a double and then he doesn't drop. That's uh, an unbelievable play to try and make. And G2 punish him for it. He has still been the hero of this map for the Mongols. That cannot be forgotten about. 24 and 19 on the latest edition. But still G2 with a statement right now. Monacy swings mid. He finds Blitz. And it's starting to unravel here in round 26. Ooh, oh, that hurts. Yeah. That hurts so much if you're Bartak. You could see how dedicated he was to chasing that kill down. He had to. There, it was like mentally in his head. He's like, no, this one is not getting away, but it does. They feed the beast and Nico taps out one of these B players. And so the B defense now falls just onto Techno. Annihilation could even get caught, you know, walking the line over in mid. Wherever G2 go, they're the favorites yeah. to win this round and they're going to move into B. The red carpet rolled out by Nico. And so just Annihilation left. 
And he should be a dead man with this boiler lurk so late in the round with players still in mid trying to hunt him. Oh. G2 really want to try and deny anything being saved from the Mongols. And so they're all hunting this. They've got three players moving in towards him and they deal with him cleanly. This is very reassuring yes. from G2, right? In spite of Nico having a pretty bad game as far as it goes, having a pretty rough go at it. You know, still having ways, like we were saying, of, you know, finding some impact with good util, but not giving the numbers that you associate with this guy. Uh, it, it's very, very reassuring to see that Hunter and Monacy can, you know, bridge that gap. Yeah, it's more like the way it happened as well in the first half with just how how destroyed he was getting by nades and uh, some unlucky rounds as well. And then, yeah, towards the end, it started to unfold for him and he, you know, read a few rounds wrong, but this D-side, he's just been confident and he's been back to his usual tricks. How is he alive? I couldn't tell you, but he's punished Hesteke. He's got his revenge from what happened in the last round of the first half. Nico throws it right back in his face. And really, that's all that matters. That's the good part about a game like this. Even if Nico goes a little quiet, it's uh, still a monstrous T-side for Hunter. Monacy with an ace. JKS returning to form. And so reassuring is the word you use. There is no better one as G2 are ready to close this game. Oh, and that's how it's going to unravel with Bartak dead down in the pit. This one is a done deal now. G2, they're being very methodical at clearing all these angles, but they've already owned the site. They've already won this round with the backstab coming in up through mid. It will be accounted for by G2. They've gone out. They've explored the extremities of this A site. They've not seen anything. And so Monacy, it's like that first half all over again, right? He's just orping down into the choke point in middle. That's a real <laughs> sign of the times play. Just barreling through the Molotov to certain death. And Blitz, 1v3, not long for this world. He's living on borrowed time here, and he knows it. G2 swing him together, and they pull the...